the heavens at the altar of prayers. At the other worth. Be alive here tonight. At the other worth. Any man that can pray has failed before he started. Oh, that thou wouldest rend the heavens. That thou wouldest come down. That the mountains might flow down at thy presence. That was the prayer of a man. That is the number one key to keep your heavens open. Is the weapon of prayers. The weapon of what? I didn't hear that. The weapon of what? Prayers. prayers. If you can't pray, you are gone. Jesus was talking to the disciples and Jesus said, Men ought always to pray and not to what? To faint. A praying man is a winning man. A praying lady is a winning lady. That is, if you are going to keep your heavens open, you must give in to a consistent prayer life. Let me say something to you. Now, prayers has nothing to do with the time as it has to do with the consistency. Now, I come again. Prayer has nothing to do with the time as it has to do with the consistency. That is, you pray on Monday. You pray on Tuesday. Even though it's 10 minutes, be consistent. Am I touching somebody here? That is, in 2020, sir, if you are going to keep your heavens open, you must be a man and a woman that give me to prayers. Not just seasonal. Not just when you are on fasting or in fasting, but you make it as your life pattern such man cannot be trapped such man cannot be caged such man cannot be molested am i talking to somebody here that is this 2020 you must pay attention to prayers not as as see let me tell you something until you make prayer as a dimension of rituals you can't see the blessedness of redemption now rituals in sense that you make it as if I don't do this, I can live. See, Jesus had what we call the hour of what? Prayers. The Bible was talking about Peter and John. He said they were going to the temple at the hour of what? Prayers. That is, there was an hour they would stipulated and delegated for prayers. That is what helps great men. That is what helps men that have commanded unusual results. They have a stipulated time. They cry to God. The Muslim prays five times a day. How many times? Now you now say you, you Christian. You just want to pray once a week. Some of you jump out of your bed without even talking to God. That is why the devil beats you every time. That is why he thinks God is not powerful. That is why he thinks God is not real. If you are going to see prophecies come to pass, you must pay attention to prayers. Somebody say pay attention. pay attention. I want to hear that loud. Somebody shall pay attention. pay attention. Jesus was talking to the disciples and Jesus said, Men, men ought always sir, to pray. To pray and not to faint. That is, if you are going to see prophecies come to pass in 2020, make it easy part of your life. You are in the bedroom, you are praying. You are working, you are praying. Don't forget what I started with. I said prayer has nothing to do with it, with time. The, not, the duration of time, duration like consistency. Like what? If it's five minutes, let it be consistent. Let it be what? I didn't hear that. Let it be what? Consistent. That is, if I'm going to see heavens open, if I'm going to function in the overflow, if I'm going to function... In a thousand times better, I must be a man that is giving to prayer, sir. A full-time demon will defeat a part-time Christian. That is this year. Give in to prayers. Give in to what? Prayers. Any Christian that sleeps all night has failed all day. 
the day takes pregnancy at night and deliver at the daytime. You deliver in the daytime what you conceive at night. And you conceive as a Christian at the altar of prayer at night. That is why this year, don't joke with your night season. Don't joke with what? Great men make use of the night seasons. Great men. Great men. That is, if you are going to break forth this year, take advantage of the night seasons. Take advantage of the night what? Seasons. Night is not meant for sleeping or true. People that will matter in this generation don't sleep all through the night. Great things happen at night. Great things happen when? Talk to me. At when? At night. But your own at night is when you sleep. At night you sleep. You sleep all through at night. Kenneth Hagin said, most of his revelations we are gotten at the night season. A man that has mastered the night season will rule in the day. Did you hear that? A man that has mastered the night season will rule in the way in the day. That is night season. It's not a time you sleep. You sleep from one edge of the bed to the other, snoring. They will kill you before your time. They don't kill men in the day. They kill them at night. They kill them well. Before you know, they just wake up with one kind of sickness. One week, they are gone. Master the night season. You want to keep your heavens open? You want this declaration of the year to find the expression in your life? Be a man that wakes up at night to travel. Barakie Sakotai Milusa Bali Aguni Kreto Susu Mekia Kutanaza. The more weak you are in the auto prayer, the more weak you are physically. Everything you see in life is for spiritual. It's first what? Talk to me, church. It's first what? Wake up. It's first what? You have to travel in the altar prayers. On the altar prayers. Listen to this. Any man that is not a praying man can have a successful home. Before you think of having a wife, assume the office of a priest. The office of what? Of a priest. Of a priest. Young lady never marry any man that can pray because you'll be running a risk. Hello? A man that can who? A normal man, a real man. You have a real man. You are sleeping all through. Something is wrong with you. After now, that devil of slumber is out of your life. Amen. Lift up your right hand, just say, I will pray. Say louder. Shout it like a Christian right now. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Quickly. Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. Then let's read. Want to go? If my people, which are called by my name, shall what? Humble themselves and pray. Hold on. That is prayer is a sign of humility. And not being prayerful is a sign of being proud. That is, you are telling God that you are self-sufficient. He said, if the people who are called by my name, they will humble their selves. And what? I didn't hear that. And what? Amen. Let's keep reading. And seek my face. And turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven. And forgive them their sins. That is, sins are forgiven at the altar of prayers. Did you get what I'm saying now? Huh? Now he said, I will forgive their sins and I will heal their what? Their land. That is the generation costs that you are experiencing can be erased at the altar of prayers. When God heal a land, that land can't be on that curse again. And when God talked about you will heal their land, he's talking about destinies. He's talking about what? I didn't hear that. He's talking about what? He's talking about destinies. If the people that is one of the highest form of arrogance to God is prayerlessness. Is prayerlessness. You see, if you know what prayer will do for you, you won't joke with prayers. 
You will joke with prayers. Because what seems good in the physical and physically is fine. But when you go to God in prayers, you just begin to see the, the openness of it. Prayer reveals deep mysteries to you. Things you can't comprehend with your optical mindset. You see at the altar prayers. That was why Jesus told them. He said, men ought always to pray. See, that brother you are following now that is doing Jim Jim Jim. In the next 10 years, will it still be hot for God? See, prayer takes, is only prayer that can take you into the future. And show you what the future is in the now. In the when? Talk to me. In the when? If you say you are a Christian for one year and you have not said, and God said this to me, you are, you are, you are joking. You are joking. You are joking. Prayer, see, let me tell you something. How it happens is that sometimes you don't plan for these things. You pray to a point, you sleep off, and you begin to see revelations and dreams. That is, you must, see, prayer is not something you do when you come to church alone. It should be a lifestyle. It should be what? Lifestyle. Talk to me. It should be what? Any woman that can pray will have a successful marriage. You pray to a point. You don't understand. See, can I say something to you? If you're a woman, if you practice these two things I want to share as a woman, eh? your husband will succeed. Your husband will succeed. One of them is prayers. See, let me tell you. Even in your giving, you must add prayer to it. Even in your worth. Do you know why? Any giving you don't add prayer to. Eh? <laughs> See, evil in your giving, evil in your stewardship. See, let me say something to you, sir. There is nothing you do in this kingdom without prayer that you can do. Jesus needed to go and kill himself, but he took time to go and pray to receive grace to kill himself. The Bible says he went to the garden of Gethsemane to pray all through the night, and the sweat that was coming out of his body was as thick as blood as what he prayed he prayed he prayed to a point that he could not utter word again the next is a lord not my will but let your will be what you can't do the will of god until you subject yourself to prayers am i talking to somebody here you can't do the will of god until you subject yourself to prayers that is why all those times you have confessed lord i will not do this thing again i will not do look up everyone lord forgive me ah, i will not do this thing again you just prayed in your house i will not do this thing again lord i swear i confess as you just step into your house it's the same thing you are doing <laughs> you will not begin to say ah, this christianity is hard is a lie see one thing prayer does for you is that it sheds you of weights you see the way snakes change skin. You change skin at the altar of prayers. Uh, do you understand what I'm talking about at all? Fasting without prayer is just religious fatigue. You are dieting. See, these 12 days will set to you for life. If you believe it, you say louder, amen. Here. Yeah. Lift up your right hand, I will pray. Prayer warriors are not people that come to church on Tuesday evening and they begin to say, they begin to sing, Lord has given us victory, victory. They'll not be shouting. No, no, no. Those are not prayer warriors. Prayer warriors are men and women that can go down on their knees in their clothes, not shouting but commanding heavens. Am I talking to somebody here? In their clothes. Those are prayer warriors. Prayer warriors are those that on their in their clothes they can intercede. For the next service, and they, God can show them the message that we preach and tell them everything that will happen. Prayer warriors. See, any great destiny can be bettered at the other prayers. Any mother that can pray with great children. Check the mother, the, uh, Charles Wesley. Their mother was a praying giant. Jesus told the disciples, the only thing the disciples of Jesus taught, told him to teach them was prayers. He said, Master, teach us how to pray as John taught his disciples. That established the fact that prayer can be taught. And he started by telling them, he said, pray this manner. Ah. Somebody said, we pray. pray. Say it louder. Shout it louder here. Pray. Pray. No matter your beauty, do all the pancake. Men will still be seeing you as a man if you are not a brain woman. 
reveal your true glory to the world. Somebody lift up your right hand. Say, we pray. Say it louder. Shout it like a Christian. <laughs> James chapter 5 verse 13. Quickly. James chapter 5 verse 13. Are you getting blessed tonight? James chapter 5 verse 13. Quickly. Let's read. Want to go? Is any among you afflicted? Hold on. That's what kind of mark is there? Is any of you afflicted? Is any of you sick? Is any of you bothered? Is any of you confused? Is, has anybody here? Is any of you heartbroken? Is any of you your money still being held down? Is any of you still looking for a job? Is any of you still looking for a wife? Looking for a husband? Is any of you looking for admission? Is any of you looking for your apartment? The answer is what? Let him what? Talk to me. Let him what? Let him what? Not let him complain. That is the answer is that let him pray. The answer is that let him what? Pray. pray. Now quickly. How should I pray to generate consistent resolve? Based on the template of prayers that Jesus stipulated in his word. One, your prayer must be kingdom minded before you can receive answers. The disciples of Jesus came to him. He said, Master, teach us how to pray. And he started by saying, Pray this manner, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be the name, thy what? Kingdom come. That is, they place the kingdom before they ask for their own selves. That is, your prayer must be kingdom minded if it's going to get resolved. Your prayers must be kingdom minded if it's going to see resolve. Listen to this. If you don't pray for church and you are just praying for yourself, you are wasting your time. <laughs> listen, listen, listen. Look up, look up, look up. This one will help somebody. Look up, look up, look up, look up. For instance, I'm praying, Lord, give me child. Give me children. Give me children. God does not just automatically answer. The first thing God checks is what is your motive of asking for the children? Is it that I should give you children to prove that you are a woman? Or to give you children to prove to your father-in-law, mother-in-law, sister-in-law that you are still a woman? Or you are still a man? Now, the, the guarantee to answer prayer is your motive. Is your what? Your motive. Now, if I tell God, Lord, give me children early so that I can serve you. So that I can have enough time to do things for your house, in your house. It comes fast. God can't resist that one. Why? My motive of asking for children is so that I can have time to do what? To what? Serve him. But if my motive of praying for children is to prove that I'm a real woman, I'm a real man. I will pray for him forever. It won't come. That is your guarantee to answer to prayer is your motive. It's your motive. Why are you asking God for a car? Is it to drive around town to prove that I can buy a car? The car will never come. But if I'm asking for the car so that I can serve God better, so that I can be more committed, the car will come. And the car will stay. There are people that have bought cars and never enjoyed the car. Why? Because after they bought car, they thought they had a pure motive. But after they bought car, their motive shifted. There are some people that have married that never enjoyed their marriage because after they got married, their motive shifted. God weighs your motive before giving you the blessing. That is, once you can solve that aspect of the motive question, you will begin to have answers to prayers cheaply. You begin to have answers to prayer cheaply. There should not be any time you pray that you shouldn't pray for church. That is how to live in the realm of answers. That is how to live in the realm of answers. See, if you have 20 minutes to pray, spend 12 minutes praying for church, 8 minutes praying for yourself. Try it for the next 3 months. You will see how your life will scale. Shh! 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 I have 
study this God that is how he works. That is why God said, before they call, I will what? Answer. It will first check your motive. It will first check your motive. It will route it through his scale of answers. And the scale of answer is that the kingdom must first come first. Am I talking to someone here? The kingdom must be first. The kingdom must be first. Why do you want God to give you that husband? Is it to prove that you two can get married? The husband will not come. Lord, I want husband so that I can serve you well. You have gotten the answer. Not just saying it from the heart, mouth, but meaning it from your heart. You see, where God will motive is not by what you say, but what is in your heart. Am I talking to somebody here? What is in your heart? What is in your heart? Why do you want God to give you money this year? Is it to prove that you two can get money? You will labor forever. It won't come. But when you say, Lord, give me money so that anytime the comfort things I will do, so that I will be involved in church, so that I won't wait, I will, I will not wait till pastor call, I will just see a need and solve. You are putting the kingdom first. God said, this is the right heart. Take money. Take money. Take. God has no problem giving you money once you have the right heart. Am I talking to somebody here? That is, God weighs your motive. God weighs your heart before giving you the answer. This year, as you cry to God, there shall be answers. Amen. I thought you would say better amen here. Amen. I said there shall be answers. Amen. I said there shall be answers. Amen. Are you blessed tonight? Yes, sir. That is that is one of the keys. That is, don't joke with prayers. Make it as rituals. Take it serious. Amen. Any man that can pray has a future. If you check Jabez, he changes life by prayers. If you change, check Jacob, he changes life by prayers. Don't joke with prayers. Don't joke with prayers. The next key to that is what I've captured. The altar of sacrifice. The altar of sacrifice. We're going to read some scripture. So that I address some things on this place. The altar of sacrifice. Let's open to the book of Romans chapter 12 verse 1. <laughs> Romans chapter 12 verse 1 quickly let's be fast let's read together I beseech thee brethren by the mercies of God that ye present your bodies a living what sacrifice now listen to this the first sacrifice God demand of you is you is who you now when he says present your body as a living sacrifice he's talking about you a man that has presented himself as a sacrifice no devil can bring that man down now because what happens is that you are not the property of God hello you are not the property of who you are not afraid of death Jesus said all that my father has committed to my hand I have not lost anyone I have kept them when you now present yourself as a living sacrifice you are a walking property of Jesus a walking property you have become God's own tool and God takes pride in your success am I talking to somebody here present yourself if Jesus was speaking say my son give me your heart give me what let me tell you something. When you give God your heart, there is nothing you can give to Him. The secret of greatness, the secret of an open heaven is giving God your whole self. There are people that have not given God their heart. There are people that have not given God their self. See, when you have not given God yourself, there is, see, you will still measure what you give to God. You still tell yourself that I'm giving God too much. Where if you sleep now, your breath is taken off, you're gone. That is one the second key to an open heaven is giving God the totality of your being. Where you come to a point, you say, All that I am, all that I have, all that I will become is for God. That is how God raised men. That is how God raised men from nothing to become something. When God checks that you have come to a point where you have decided in your heart that all that I am. All that I will become is for heaven. He has no problem raising you to any standard. But your problem is that all that you have, all that you have, 
you are right now and all that you will become is for yourself god said let me keep you in this place you think you have seen money lift up your hand and stretch it towards me you think you have seen money this very year as you give god your heart the kind of money that god will give to you he will make people to believe god yeah. i told you we say better amen here yeah. 